opinion, Read With Jenna generally recommends good reads, but I'm always skeptical about thrillers. I just feel like it's a genre that's better for watching than reading, so how does All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker stack up? Hi, I'm Amanda, and this is Spineless Books, your one-stop shop for all things audiobook. As you can tell, I'm not in my usual spot, but it's for a crazy reason. I had this video slated, scheduled, edited, and ready to go, and then I got to meet Chris Whitaker. Totally random, totally crazy, but he was at my local library, and I got to go hear him speak about his book, and I got to meet him. You'll see a picture of me geeking out with him right here. But the best part was he read a snippet of chapter four of the book, and I filmed it, and when I walked up to him, I actually asked him permission to use it on this channel, and he said, go for it. Such a nice guy, such a good human, and really, really cool. So without further ado, here is Chris Whitaker himself reading part of chapter four of All the Colors of the Dark. To four, which is Ash, who is kind of the star of the book, he is walking to school. Hines rose through gold and blue shadow. The light leaves swept aside as he followed trails that skirted the town limits. A long way above, he'd see the lowest hills buffeting the Missouri River, the low climb of industrial air and the cities of farmland hidden by silver silos. A dodge with no fender was sunk in the air, no wheels, just left for the wild, for kids to bullseye the windshield. A leaf lit caught in the spindles of eastern red bud, the dinks wrapped a smile in Jimmy Carter, shirt sleeves rolled up like he was close to the kind of people he was calling on to vote for. The lake came to view, a faded sign warned of an undercurrent. In the summer, kids jumped from slick rocks the colour of emerald. The boy named Colson had gone swimming and never come back, and rumour had it he lived at the bottom. Watching the girl's legs as they kicked, choosing the right moment to reach out and take it. Patch picked up a black rock and counted six skins as the water coined towards blades of common reed. He balanced along the rusted rails of the Monteclair Railroad, arms out. The steel was red and warped. He watched a scissor tailed flycatcher dark on his perch. The scream stopped him. A hard scream. Down into the high side of the valley he saw splinters of a navy van. The breath so thick he moved nearer still. Maybe it was a wrapper for a Ford, and now in the dirt as he saw her, Misty Mayer. For a moment she figured she was out with a boy and misread it. She was in his math class, his age but passed too easy for older. Then he saw the back of a man, his hood up despite the heat. Patch desperately looked around for anyone at all, anyone who could handle this, who could ease the responsibility, the acute burden of seeing a girl in trouble. Another scream. He whispered a curse, reached a hand up and touched the eye patch, as his mind ran to silver tongue Martin and wild dead blow, the band of fearless. He moved, misty scream as Pat slid down the bank. He bent low and wished he had his slingshot as he picked up a rock. At ten feet away the man heard him and turned. A bad club hid all but the dead in his eyes. Pat held his breath, held the rock and dropped low as he took the man down at the knees. Run, Pat chill. Misty stood frozen, fear claiming her muscles. Shirt torn, her bag in the dirt. Days like she'd been dragged into a nightmare. The man rolled over him. Run, Patch managed to whisper, his lungs empty. He felt a hand on his throat, and he begged Misty with his eye, snapped from him. Finally, she saw him. She was tall, a track star. Her eyes met, and then she turned and popped her arms and lit out through the woodland. The man was up and moving to follow her, but Patch was right up with him. He pulled the dagger for the second time that morning. The man grabbed his wrist and twisted. Sun hit the blade till it met Patch's stomach. He fell to the ground and clutched at the wound. The forest around turned to night, but he saw no moon and no stars. The next day, an army of walkers would beat the woodland to find a fell blind patch with a silver star. Chief Nix would run over every bad man within a hundred miles. His mother would fall apart entirely. His best friend Saint would stalk the streets when home had paper long since burned, getting herself into a world of trouble. None would yet know of the evolving tragedy that would be their lives. Now, I don't generally love thrillers. I just feel like they often fall short of expectations, and I think it's kind of like a movie genre thing. I feel like thrillers translate really well visually, but in reading, they just often feel like a letdown. 
But I was hearing a lot of praise for All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. Now, I wouldn't say I never read thrillers, because I do, but at the same time, they're just not at the top of my list most of the time. But I decided to give this one a go because it was literally everywhere. Right off the bat, I liked Chris Whitaker's writing. He's really descriptive, and I think he did a great job of setting up his characters and introducing them in a way that made me sort of compelled to pay attention to them. So I had a very clear visual of the two main characters pretty much immediately. Joseph Patch Macaulay is a young boy. He's, he's a poor kid, and he was born with one eye, hence the patch. And his best friend, Saint, who's sort of a misfit girl in the same poor town. They're who we follow, and they're the two characters that right away you're kind of pulled into. I was invested in them very, very early, and I really felt like, yeah, I want to know what's going to happen to these two. What happens to these two is that they become intertwined in a trauma that literally captivates and dictates the fate of an entire small town over many years. For Patch, it becomes an obsession that he can't move on from. And for Saint, it actually turns into her life's work and a passion. I found the book to be fast-paced and never lacking in action. Every scene was really vivid, and there were a lot of things happening pretty much every moment in the book. I never got bored, and I never got tired, and I was always interested in what was about to happen next. Even though there were a lot of complicated relationships in this book, it never got confusing. And I think the reason why is because Chris Whitaker gives every character a crystal clear motivation. There is such an obvious link for each character through the entire book from beginning to end that it's really, really helpful and it keeps everything on target in a really impressive way when things could easily go awry because there's so much going on. Even though each character differs, they all have a really reliable driving force. They're unique, but everything just keeps moving because they all have this thing that they're going towards, albeit different. The book was narrated by Eduardo Ballerini. Now, he's sort of a everyman narrator, if that makes sense. He's got a very classic voice. He does subtle accents. He does subtle changes in his voice for different characters, but he's just sort of a regular guy. He sounds really clean and crisp, and I really like his pacing. There are definitely narrators who I feel like push the story a little too fast, and then there are some where I'm like, come on, like enough with the pauses, but he's just right down the middle. I feel like he's the pace that my brain reads, even though my brain doesn't do any reading because I'm listening. Listening, but I really, really like the way that he presents a novel. I've listened to a number of things that he's narrated, and I just feel like he's a really strong male narrator, very reliable, very consistent. I don't want to spoil anything, but I do want to tell you how I felt at the end of this book. Like I said, a lot goes on, but I felt really strongly like the conclusion was pretty spot on. A lot wraps up, there were things that came out of the book that wrapped up at the end that I didn't see coming. I wasn't really feeling like I had to listen to the book to figure out like, ooh, what's going to happen next? I was able to just sort of let the book happen to me. But everything that Chris Whitaker writes is seeded. So there are little tiny plants early on in the book and in the middle of the book and towards the end of the book that all resolve. And some of them I remembered and thought, oh, okay, that's how that wraps up. And others I kind of completely forgot about, or I just wasn't paying attention to the right things while I was listening. I don't think that was me. I think that was really well-crafted writing. Whitaker does a great job of carrying you through this story. And yeah, he distracts you in a few moments so that you don't catch certain things thoroughly, even though they're there and they are set up. There were some clues in plain sight in this book. And there were fantastic characters that really compelled you to pay attention. I felt invested in them, good or bad. I really wanted to know what was going to happen. But remember, you might love what I hate and hate what I love. So make your own opinion. But thanks for listening to mine. I hope you like and subscribe. See you next time.